There's only one way to be absolutely sure of the shark's identity. And that is through DNA. During the ransom investigation, small tooth fragments were recovered. Unfortunately, these shards contain no tooth pulp, just enamel. And there's never been a way to get DNA from tooth enamel alone. But that could soon change. I brought something for you that might be a big help. Ralph has been working with marine scientist Brian Swig to crack this puzzle. And after two years of hard work, they could be closing in on a breakthrough, thanks to a device called a freezer mill. Do you think you have a chance of getting DNA using this? Operating at liquid nitrogen temperatures of minus 300 degrees, the mill grinds genetic materials down to an incredibly fine grain, making the DNA more accessible at least in theory. With this equipment and the research that I've been reading about, I think it might be possible, but you know, I'm, I'm just not 100% sure. It would be great if we could learn more about the shark that attacked Lucas Ransom. And at the very least, it might give the family some closure. Details, like its gender and known relatives, could be hidden inside a single strand of DNA. For days, the extraction process wears on. But before Ralph and Brian can profile the animal that killed Luke Ransom, there's a fourth shark attack on October 19th, 2014. I have this huge shark in my face chomping on my boat. Every two years like clockwork since 2008, giant shark has terrorized Surf Beach, twice, with fatal consequences. And now, Brandon heads to Santa Barbara to meet with Tara Burnley, the fourth shark attack victim of October 2014. Something huge came up from behind me and hit the back of my boat and swung it around. I was thrown out of the boat. I was in the water and then looking underneath at the shark chomping on my boat. So that's where he grabbed and he kept just chomping down right there? He chomped down a couple times on it. When you were eye to eye with the mm -hmm. shark, how big was the eye? I was about like that big. It was definitely a white shark, but the bite marks put it only at about 10 feet long, too small to be the surf beach animal. After this attack, the waters around Surf Beach go silent, but they still may have the evidence they need to prove the theory that a single shark is responsible. At the DNA lab, Ralph Collier and Dr. Swig continue their work on the tooth fragments from the 2010 attack, hoping to find a link between all of the attacks. And then, a groundbreaking discovery. I was able to extract DNA from some of those tooth fragments. It's the first time anyone's ever been able to extract DNA from a shark tooth fragment. And in the future, that genetic signature could reveal a whole host of hidden secrets about the individual and their species. But for now, like a fingerprint, it's only useful if Brandon and Ralph can find a shark to compare it to. And they know exactly where to search.